Hello and welcome to this short video for NXL GCSC Science and Biology. We're going to look at cell specialization and, the, and there are three particular cells we're going to look at. Those are egg cells, sperm cells, and what we call ciliated epithelial cells. Ciliated epithelial cells. And there is a diagram of each one of those cells on the screen in front of you. Now, if we were looking at specialization, well, what do we mean by specialization? Well, in fact, all the cells in the body all have a particular job. And to do that particular job, they need to be specialized in terms of how they look and the kinds of parts they contain to do particular functions. So we're looking at just three examples of those cells. There are over 200 kinds of cells in the human body. If we're looking at our egg cell, first thing to remember is that it has a nucleus. Now pretty much every cell in the body has a nucleus, but what's different about egg cells is that they contain half the number of chromosomes as normal body cells. Or you could say they contain half the amount of DNA compared to normal body cells. They also contain a food store, so normally we would label this part in the middle there uh, cytoplasm, and it is the cytoplasm of the egg cell, but it is particularly rich in the nutrients. And it contains nutrients that because if the egg is fertilized, then it can or it has the nutrients it needs to begin to grow. So this is our egg cell. The next cell we want to the next cell we want to look at is the sperm cell. And there are a few different parts we need to look at. And the first one here is called the acrosome. And the acrosome is a small part right at the tip of the sperm cell, and it contains what we call enzymes. And these enzymes have a specific job, a particular job. They are designed to hydrolyze, or in other words, break down the membrane of the egg cell. So as soon as the sperm cell reaches the egg cell, that enzyme can be released and the wall or the cell membrane, should we say, of the egg cell is broken down. Tail is quite an obvious one in terms of its function. We also have a nucleus. And again, just like the egg cell, that nucleus is what we call haploid. So let's just make a note, it contains half the number of chromosomes of most body cells. And in fact, we should also probably mention that that number is 23 for humans. So egg cells and sperm cells contain 23 chromosomes each. Next thing to look at is what we call the midpiece, and that contains many, many mitochondria. And we looked at mitochondria in our last video. Mitochondria have the job of releasing energy by aerobic respiration. And you can imagine that that energy is very important to help the tail move to help the sperm cell swim. And, and sperm cells in that midpiece have large numbers of mitochondria. Our last cell is our cell, uh, ciliated epithelial cell. And an example of where you might find this is in the lining of the windpipe. We could call the windpipe the trachea, but they are found in that lining. And along those cells, we have little hair-like projections called cilia. These are like small hairs. And why are they so important? Well, epithelial is covering Epithelial tissue is covering tissue, and those cells help to cover the inside layer of the windpipe or the trachea. And those cilia, they can move in a kind of wafting fashion, so they can move. And when they move, they will move any mucus, which might contain microorganisms, bacteria, and also possibly any dust. They can move that outwards or up and out from the windpipe so that there's a much less chance of infection in the windpipe. Okay, so these are three specific cells that you need to know about and the kinds of structures they have and the functions of those structures to help those cells be specialized. Okay, so quite a short video. However, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.